Hello, welcome back to Planet 40k. In today's video, we're going to be speculating on whether the Necron Codex is going to be getting their army of renown. Now, very shortly, the new chapter of Prue book is going to be coming out, and of course, Necrons are the cover boys of that book. So there is a lot of rumours in the rumour mill that we're going to be getting army of renown. So before getting into today's video, shout out to Joe M for helping me provide this video today. And one last thing before the video begins, I've got a product to show you. So we got a product from our good friends at the Magnet Baron and they've got the Doomsday Arc Custom Flight Stand Kit. Now this is $11.99 in US dollars and this is basically going to protect the Doomsday Arc stand from actually snapping when you're travelling to your games. Now the kit's going to be coming with a stand converter, a large rock anchor and the flight stand and magnets of course will be included in this kit. Now this image here is simply just going to show you how this operates, it's fairly straightforward. The stand is going to be attached to the actual arc itself with the magnet at the bottom and then there's going to be another magnet on your base. Now there will be a rock anchor provided as mentioned which will cover the magnets on the base so they won't be seen. And you'll be getting all this for $11.99 in US dollars and they do ship worldwide. So if you are interested in the Doomsday Arc Custom Flight Stand Kit, you'll find the link in the description for the Magnet Baron. Check that one out if you haven't, there's plenty more products on their website. That's the Magnet Baron, link below. Okay, so let's kick on with the video which is speculating the Army of Renown. So firstly, we should probably explain what Army of Renown actually is. So it's a variant army list for a particular faction in the 40k game that's themed around a particular disposition of forces. So to simplify that, it's just basically a themed list that are dedicated to only certain models within your actual codex. So there are currently eight factions that have already got Army of Renown. So you've got the Space Marines, you've got the Adeptus Mechanicus, Chaos Demons, Imperial Knights, Tyranids, Orcs, the Death Watch and the Death Guard. So as an example, kind of relating to our previous video with the Tyranids Know Your Foe video, the Tyranids have the Crusher Stampede Army of Renown, which is kind of a monster heavy Army of Renown and all the monsters that are within their lists gain extra buffs. Now there are restrictions as well as benefits to each Army of Renown and for this video we're going to pretty much go through potential options that Games Workshop could give the Necron faction. Now the reason I'm speculating about the Army of Renown for Necrons is very simply with the cover boys for the new chapter approved book coming out. So we're likely going to be seeing some sort of changes to our current codex and data sheets. Hopefully it will be Army of Renown. So the four that I'm going to speculate today are as follows. So we've got the Destroyer Cult, we've got the Canoptic build, We've got the main arc dynasty. Then we've got Amrakir, the Traveller's personal legion, which is the Pyrian legion. Now for this video in particular, we're going to be talking about the Destroyer cult build as well as the Canoptic build. We're not going to go through the other two. They're more lore based. And as you know already, I'm not that big on the lore. However, if we're talking about the in-game kind of stuff, you don't need to know too much in terms of lore to be able to build a Destroyer cult list or a Canoptic build. So to begin, we're going to speculate how we can gain an army of renown with using the Destroyer cult units. So I've got some ideas for some restrictions when taking the Destroyer Cult Army of Renown. So first of all, all units must have the Destroyer Cult keyword, that sounds kind of obvious. All units must be from the same dynasty, however units cannot benefit from the dynasty codes. Now I personally would like us to benefit from the dynasty codes, but the way previous Army of Renowns have gone, they've taken away all the codes, they've taken away the high fleets, the Orc Clan cultures, the chapter tactics, all the current Army of Renowns do not have their sub-faction abilities. So that's the restrictions, how about the benefits? So for the Destroyer Cult Army of Renown, I would like to see all Destroyer Cult units have a 5 plus invulnerable save. None of them currently have an invun save. That would be a pretty big bonus to be giving our Destroyer Cult units, especially when you're actually taking away their Dynasty code, so they've got to have something in return, and that's what I would give them. They're also going to have access to some more unique Warlord traits, Relics, as well as Stratagems, which we'll go over in a moment. Then I've just thrown in at the bottom there, each unit can take a Canoptic Plasma Site at no additional cost. Now I know Canoptic Plasma Sites have not got the Destroyer Cult keyword, they've actually got the Canoptic keyword. However, they've got, of course got abilities that are associated with the Destroyer Cult units. So that's the restrictions and the benefits that I would do. How about the Wall of Traits, Relics and Stratagems? So Wall of Trait wise, we've only really got the Scorpet Lord and the Locust Lord. So we will be losing our Command Protocols right there because there's no Noble. Now I personally would like to see them have the fight again warlord trait, just give them a little bit more punch in melee. They don't seem to be that great in melee, so that's something that I would do. As far as relics are concerned, there's a few options here. We could possibly have an advance and charge option, 
Maybe we can upgrade the hardwire for destruction ability to be able to reroll all hit rolls for units within 6 inches as opposed to just the rolls of a 1. Or maybe just a plus 1 to the damage in melee of the Locust Lord and Scorpet Lord. There's some of the relics that I'd like to see and that could potentially happen. Now as for stratagems, a lot of factions now are getting their own version of transhuman physiology so you can't wound them on less than a 4 plus, a little bit like our quantum shielding ability. I would like to see that as a stratagem for destroyer cult units, so that's the first one. Maybe we could have some sort of heroic intervention within 3 inches, similar to the canoptic units that have the stratagem in slave protectors, but be able to use that on destroyer cult units. And then the third one, I've got Extermination Protocols version 2. Kind of like how we used to have in the old edition, re-rolling all hit rolls and all wound rolls. Now I know the current version is just the wound rolls and it's two command points and it's kind of pricey especially when you're going with your heavy locust destroyers that got strength 10. So I'd like to see this to be able to affect the hit rolls as well as the wound rolls. So that's the kind of changes I'd like to see if they brought an army of renown for the destroyer cult units. So next I want to talk about the canoptic build. Now we are limited with the canoptic units, there's not that many here so I've also included the cryptic models because of course we do need some HQs to be able to create detachments. So as for the restrictions here, all units must have the cryptic or canoptic keyword, all units must be from the same dynasty and all units will not be benefiting from the dynasty code. So very similar restrictions. Now potentially this could be for every unit that doesn't have the canoptic keyword, you must have a canoptic unit within that detachment. So I'll use the example with the Tyranid's Crusher Stampede. They have for every non-monster unit within the Army of Renown, there must be a monster unit. So one for one. So for example, if you're taking three Canoptic Scab units and three Canoptic Wraith units, that will allow us to have six units that do not have the Canoptic keyword. And that's just an option. But for this video, I've gone with the Canoptic units as well as the Cryptic units, just to make it a little bit easier on the video. Now as for the benefits, all units get a plus one to their hit rolls because at the moment all the canoptic units are hitting on fours so I'd like to see that increase to a three plus. Secondly, reanimation protocols to work on a four plus as opposed to a five plus. Now pretty much all the canoptic models are multi-wound models and they're quite hard to reanimate so having a reanimation on a four plus roll as opposed to a 5 plus roll for every single wound of course, just gives them half a chance of actually getting back up again. Now that's only really going to work on the canoptic wraiths, the canoptic scarabs, possibly the canoptic spiders as well, because other standard models within the codex are single models that have got living metal. Now of course you can jump into the forge world units such as your canoptic acanthrites, they'll also benefit with this reanimation roll of a 4 plus. The third benefit I'd like to see here is the canoptic scarabs becoming a troop choice. Now of course we're going to need some sort of troops if you want to build your basic detachments, especially if you're going to be going Canoptic Wraith and Canoptic Scarab heavy in this kind of list. So I'd like to see the Canoptic Scarabs becoming a troop choice. Alternatively, we could have cheaper Outrider detachments, but then we're only limited to having three Canoptic Scarab units, whereas if they were a troop option, there will be no rule of three, so you can have more than three of them because they're a troop selection. And of course, they're going to have objectives secured as well, which is going to be quite nice for us. The fourth benefit is Crypto Thralls to come with the Cryptex at no additional cost. Very similar to the Plasma Sites in the previous build, they're usually 40 points and they're kind of redundant at the moment, to be honest. They don't do the secondary objectives anymore that well, but since the previous chapter approved, but who knows? maybe in this new chapter approved they become more of a usable unit again. Then the last benefit is access to unique wall of traits, relics and stratagems again. So we're going to go through some of those. Wall of trait wise, units within 6 inches get a plus 1 to the charge roll, pretty standard. Now because we've got cryptic models as the HQs within this army of renown, there's not much they can do, they're not really choppy, they're not going to be going slicing and dicing like a Scorpet Lord or a Destroyer Lord. The Cryptic models tend to be more support characters, so that's where the Wall of Traits are going to lie. Now I've already given them the plus one to hit in the benefits section, so we can't be adding the plus one to hit here. So I'm thinking the plus one to charge is probably where it could go. Relic wise is quite a difficult one again because again they support characters, they're not choppy characters, they're not going on the offense. So I've got two here as options, the first one being the bearer gets a 4 plus invulnerable save. Now a chronomancer already has that so a chronomancer isn't going to need that one. But a technomancer with the 4 plus invulnerable save could be quite nice. And another one which is a little bit left field which is the Veil of Darkness Relic version 2. Being able to use a Veil of Darkness Relic twice in a battle as opposed to once. I don't think that's too overpowered, it's going to get a unit to a certain location and then you're going to zip them off 9 inches away again to another location, maybe it will help with secondary objectives, maybe it will give you a chance of taking out a second unit with your Scorbit Destroyers perhaps. Now stratagem wise, I've, again I've gone with the Transhuman Physiology, it's kind of a common theme now with 9th edition, so not being able to wound our guys on a 4+, plus. and also I've gone with the Advance and Charge option. Now our Canoptic Wraiths used to have that in past editions, 
so I would like to see that as a stratagem of some sorts. Then I've gone with Enslave Protectors version 2. Now I would give a 6 inch heroic intervention but it would probably cost you 2 command points as opposed to 1 because 6 inches is quite a large amount so yeah 2 command points as opposed to 1 for the standard Enslave Protectors. Then finally just being able to return D3 Lost Scabs to a unit I think D6 is probably a bit too overpowered, especially being able to use that every single turn, but D3 I think is a fair amount. Okay guys, so that's my ideas in terms of speculating Army of Renown for the Necron faction. If you've got any ideas what you think we might be getting, put them down in the comments below. Maybe I've got this completely wrong, but I'm sure you guys have some ideas to add in the comments. So guys, other than that, all that's left to say, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.